I came to Santa Monica the first time during World War II, for my health, you might say. This was a major rehabilitation center in those days. I managed to get around a little during my convalescence and took a real fancy to the place. A lot of other guys did too. Like some of them, after it was all over, I came back and settled down. Why? For a lot of reasons, I guess. The climate, the people, the beauty of the whole place. It's sort of hard to explain. I heard a poem once that pretty well sums it up, though. It went something like this. There's a breathtaking spot in this great land of ours where the mountains descend to the sea in more wondrous beauty than words can express, and my loved one did wait there for me. Where the mountains meet the sea, that verse might have been written about Santa Monica. To me, it's not only one of the most popular seashore resorts in Southern California, but a little bit of paradise. Historians say that Spanish sea captain Juan Rodriguez Cabrillo sailed his galleons into peaceful Santa Monica Bay some 400 years ago during an exploration voyage from Mexico. He was greeted, they say, by the first inhabitants of this now famous resort area, Shoshone Indians. Some years later, according to legend, two thirsty soldiers from a mission of Junipero Serra came upon this bubbling brook. Upon first taste, one was said to have exclaimed, this water is as precious as the tears of St. Monica. Some say this is how Santa Monica derived its name. Whether true or not, Today in Palisades Park, where world-renowned Wilshire Boulevard meets the vast Pacific Ocean, St. Monica watches majestically over her faithful subjects. During her years of struggle to acquire and retain autonomy as a delightful suburban seashore community, Santa Monica has had pressures applied from all sides, all sides except the West, that is, which boundary alone has presented no threat yet is one of the city's most valuable assets, the broad blue Pacific. Although this vacation land by the edge of the sea embraces an area of only eight square miles, there is more here to see, to do, and to enjoy than in most communities many times its size. According to the latest census, Santa Monica's population has grown to some 87,000 permanent residents. Of these, a good number like myself are employed right here. Others are engaged in business in numerous nearby sections of the greater Los Angeles area. Our rapid growth may be no more unique than can be said of many other progressive American cities. But for most of us, to consider living elsewhere, uh-uh. Our free time, our loyalty, our interests belong in Santa Monica for some pretty obvious reasons. One of the area's most notable residents was the beloved humorist and humanitarian Will Rogers, whose sage advice and wry wit brought him international fame. This was his home a sprawling ranch situated on a picturesque site containing some 340 acres. Since Will's untimely death in 1935, the property has been preserved as a memorial state park. It has remained exactly as he left it, complete with stables, corrals, roping arena, and riding trails winding through the beautiful countryside. A 
landowner of perhaps longest standing in the community is motion picture personality Leo Carrillo, familiarly known throughout the state as Mr. California. Mr. Carrillo still resides on property obtained from an original Spanish land grant handed down to him by his illustrious ancestors. His enchanting ranch is literally a colorful page out of history. Popular screen star Cesar Romero is one of the many movie personalities who either now or at one time have resided in Santa Monica and surrounding communities. The list reads like the credits of an all-time epic motion picture spectacle. Names? Well, to mention just a few, there's Raymond Burr. Jane Mansfield, Glenn Ford, Shirley Temple, Jerry Lewis, producer Daryl Zanuck, Joan Crawford, Marion Davies, Ronald Reagan, Cary Grant. The exclusive Malibu Beach Colony is home to many who enjoy the sand and surf at their doorstep. Actually, Santa Monica's basic economic structure revolves around people, people of all kinds, not so much her own, but rather the hundreds of thousands who come here to play, to relax, to enjoy the warm hospitality extended to all. You might refer to it as the tourist trade. Santa Monicans politely consider them visitors. Playing host to carefree vacationers from far and near is a full-time, year-round activity at this popular Southern California place. Santa Monica enjoys this pleasant, if not always easy, task and even during peak summer months is ably equipped to handle the needs and desires of every guest. Just for fun, let's take a whirlwind tour of this unique eight square mile paradise and see why it has become such a popular year-round resort community. You know, we have a saying that the sun doesn't hibernate, it spends the winters here and blends with the soft sand and invigorating surf to form a natural formula for bathing. Tanning, or just plain relaxing. Thousands of beach fans will attest to this on any balmy afternoon. From the new headquarters building, skillfully trained lifeguards stand watch over the bathing populace along the entire three miles of sandy beaches. If they spot you during their rounds, they'll tell you when you're getting a little too well roasted. They'll even remove a sand speck from your eye. Oh, come on now. There's a limit even to a lifeguard. If you're the athletic type, maybe you'll want to try your hand at this. It's a vigorous game, particularly when played on sand. If this is your sport, be my guest. Pacific Ocean Park, America's newest and most fabulous amusement center, there's exciting fun for all. At 
T.O.P., the old rub elbows with the young in a mutual quest for pleasure. Yes, even the very young. He likes strolling around and seeing the sights. If you like thrill rides, P.O.P.'s modern roller coaster is one of the world's most exciting. eye view of the entire park from the top of the fabulous space wheel, plus a few thrilling moments while gliding through the air. How about taking a spectacular sky ride out over the ocean? Or to the depths of Davy Jones' locker in a diving bell? Mystery Island, land of exotic birds, strange tropical beasts, and deep, dark tunnels. Your friendly host at P.O.P. is none other than world-famous circus clown, Emmett Kelly. These are probably the best-fed seals in captivity. Fabulous Sea Circus. A playful porpoise always seems to delight an audience. This one gets his meal the hard way. Ever see a whale jump rope? Dozens of sensational acts at the Sea Circus captivate huge crowds at each performance. When you put P.O.P. on your schedule, allow plenty of time. There's a lot to see and do. At some time during your stay, you'll probably see one of Hollywood's high fashion photographers busily at work while you play. This is work? At several picturesque yacht harbors in the area, you'll find just about everything from dinghy to schooner in the way of pleasure craft to whet your nautical appetite. Ah man, this is really living. Any dyed-in-the-wool rod and reeler will convince you that fishing is our greatest national pastime. And what true angler would think of coming here without intending to try his skill against the mighty denizens of the deep blue Pacific? Just name your quarry. Albacore, marlin, bass, barracuda, they're out there waiting for you. If you like company, climb aboard one of the big boats. If you prefer your own company, that also can be arranged. Of course, if you're a land lover, but just can't resist the thrill of fishing over a rail, join the crowd on the pier. You'll catch them, too. You know, lots of folks who have come here for a visit got the feel of sand in their shoes and just decided to stay. But don't tab this aggressive city as being dependent entirely upon vacationers. It's a happy combination of many things that have contributed to its rapid growth. 
During recent years, special emphasis has been placed on high-type diversified industry, including research and development of electronics, so important to this space age. It's a growth that has demanded constant improvement, ever broadened development, both municipally and through private enterprise. There are a number of excellent banking institutions to serve every financial need. Although several daily newspapers cover the greater Los Angeles area, most of us have come to depend upon our own for up-to-the-minute news and timely information of both local and international significance. Editorially, our newspaper has done much to influence and stimulate avid interest in local affairs and in this way has contributed greatly to the growth of this progressive city by the sea. Our paper also has the distinction of being selected reading in the local school system as an educational aid, including our own city college. Speaking of schools, Santa Monica is acknowledged to have one of the finest systems in the nation, both scholastically and athletically. Douglas Aircraft Company, one of the world's largest, created its first airplane designs on a drawing board located in the rear of a local barber shop. Today it provides by far the biggest payroll in Santa Monica. The story of this great company spans the history of aviation. It is a saga of industrial enterprise, a tribute to the genius of its founders and to the achievements of its people. One of America's largest telephone systems, with California headquarters located here, never ceases in its efforts to improve service or acquire greater knowledge in the scientific progress of communications. Like other progressive business firms in the area, ample off-street parking is provided for employees and visitors. Recently, a team of top experts at this prominent electronics firm, which deals in high-priority security projects, came up with a mechanical brain, which although designed...